So, uh, welcome. This is my uh, my final stop of the 2020 virtual UMass Orchard Summer Tour. Uh, apologize for the length of that peach video. Try to make uh, this one a little shorter, but I'm here in my apple variety evaluation block. Um, I don't have all those, I don't know, 10 or 12 rows, and there's different stuff scattered here and about. But I've been kind of doing casual apple variety evaluation since I came to UMass in, uh, in 2000. Um, and I'll show you a few of the uh, particular varieties that interest me right now. Uh, one is this apple called Modi, M-O-D-I. Modi is a Liberty by Gala Cross. These trees are on Geneva 214. I think we talked about that down at the... Uh, the NC140 Honeycrisp planting, but a uh, beautiful little group of trees right here. Uh, Modi is, a, I really like it, it's scab resistant. Unfortunately, um, it's a clubbed variety in that it's only available to a, a, a select outfit in California. I've been talking with Jack Snyder out in Washington a little bit about seeing if they would release this because I think it would be a really good apple for Northeast growers, scab resistant better than Liberty to bind some of the nice features of Gala. What's interesting this year is uh, there was a lot of over thinning of the apples, a lot of over chemical thinning. Normally Modi, I have to come in here and do quite a bit of hand thinning. This year without any hand thinning, actually the crop, no, it's a nice crop. It's just perfect. Don't have to do any hand thinning, but normally I have to do quite a bit of hand thinning on this. So that's Modi on Geneva 214. Uh, here's a group of 30 trees that I think is in its third leaf. These are some uh, selections from Cornell, uh, New York 1602, New York 1603, and I believe New York 1604. On Geneva 935 rootstock, you can kind of see the vigor of the 935. Um, I haven't had any fruit off these yet, but obviously I will this year. This one is 1602. I believe they're saying some of these might be good for cider, so I don't know if that's true or not. This kind of looks like an apple that might be a fairly good cider apple. So these 30 New York numbered selections from Cornell we're testing here. Uh, I've got some pizzazz in here. Pizzazz is a uh, P-A-Z-A-Z-Z -Z -Z club variety. It thinned pretty hard this year, pretty heavily. So there's a light crop. Um, it's actually available to plant via a retail agreement, but it's a little complicated. But it's being grown out in Washington, the Midwest, New York, and Nova Scotia. Um, just note the fire blight. Pizzazz has shown to have quite a bit of uh, uh, fire blight sensitivity. So I have to keep up on the strep sprays of these, which you can see the crop in there is fairly light. These apples are gonna be pumpkins. The uh, really good thing about pizzazz is it really stores very well um, and has a nice uh, sweet tart, sweet tart acid balance. That's pizzazz. Can't help myself here, a little more pizzazz. These are actually an original pizzazz planting on Bud 9 rootstock. You can see the light crop, but I've been top working um, some older test trees to pizzazz and making uh, it's going to be hard to see here uh, some multi-liter trees out of those with two liters coming off that uh, top worked graft. But just really disappointed in the crop load this year. Last year there was a good crop in these. There was a good bloom. They just did not set well or got over thinned. So here uh, is a row that I think in third leaf. These are a bunch of selections from the uh, Midwest Apple Improvement Association breeding program. Oh, there's two or three or four trees of each selection. You can kind of maybe see, I've got some tags on them here. I don't know if you can see that well, but it's uh, MDW 4-47, MDW 4-75, you get the idea. I forget, oh, these are on Geneva 41, I'm pretty sure. I can almost tell just by looking at the, uh, the base of the tree. There's, there's no burnouts, a few root suckers. 
and it looks like 41. I think that was the rootstock here. But you can kind of see the different different cropping levels. Um, this is the I had a little fruit last year. This will be the first year where I've got a crop. Somebody, myself, I guess, needs to get in here and tie some treetops up. That kind of gives you an idea of what's going on. You can see there's quite a few selections, so that'll keep me a little busy this fall evaluating these MAIA selections. Now, I don't have any ludicrous here. That's kind of the hot one these days. I've got actually a, a tree, a couple trees grafted to ludicrous. But I'll show you in a minute here, MAIA1. You can think about what that is, but you probably know what it is. Uh, just quickly, uh, Liz's cider apples are also in here. This was uh, a bunch of apple trees that were from New Zealand that we grafted over. None of them were any good, really. Um, she'll tell you more about that. Um, notice the double leader, though. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work out. My feeling is these cider apples are a challenge. All right, this is MAIA1, Midwest Apple Improvement Association's first release. You should be able to guess what it is. It's Evercrisp. These are probably some of the first Evercrisp trees in Massachusetts on Geneva 41 rootstock. Um, you know, it's a nice tree. I wish it would crop a little heavier. You can see there's not too many apples in here. Might have got over thin, but so far the history of this Evercrisp has been such that it's not cropping terribly well. I'm gonna try and find a quiet day without wind and stuff to shoot video. But anyways, that's Evercrisp. And there's 30 trees here. That actually, uh, another variety selection test row down there but I'm not going to get into that one. Ah, I do have some more Modi trees down here. These are on M9. Actually these are a little older than that group of Modi I, I showed you at the top. But again normally I have to come through here and hand thin this pretty hard. Not this year. The cropping is actually fairly light on these trees. All right I'll bore you tease you with one more. This is uh, Evangeline. On Geneva 41. How many of you know the story of a of Angeline by Longfellow? This was came out of the uh, Kentville Nova Scotia breeding program and the New Brunswick apple growers own it now. I dare say these are the only trees in the United States. I kind of hope they release it. It's kind of an interesting apple. It's 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 got complex flavor, fairly late harvested. I think it's gonna make a, be, be a good cider apple. The Japanese beetles like it. Kind of lanky, tip-bearing, um, not overly productive yet, but it's got a, a decent crop considering the year. So that's that's Evangeline, and these are on these were on Geneva 41. Some of the trees didn't live, and I had to uh, I grafted them with some budwood, and uh, that's the smaller trees there. But that's, that's Evangeline on Geneva 41. This is Ambrosia on Bud 9. These trees are actually 20 years old. Um, just to show you that you can manage. These trees are planted four feet apart, kind of a vertical axis style. Um, I don't remember the cropping last year. I thought we had thinned it enough such that we should have had a good crop. It seemed to me it bloomed. But again, like a lot of stuff this year, it over thinned. I know Many of you are planting ambrosia now. Um, these were some of the first ambrosia trees in Massachusetts. I really like the apple. Basically, it's a beautiful apple. Got to pick it on time. Don't let it get over mature. So that's ambrosia on Bud 9. So that's a, a quick tour of my apple variety evaluation block at the UMass Orchard. Again, I do some pretty casual observations on these, um, take them into the lab. Test them for sugars, fruit size, firmness, etc., and make some observations in the database I have. Um, that's just generally what I do. There's more here, but if I showed you those, I'd have to kill you, so I'm not going to do that. 
But uh, slowly winding down in this apple variety valuation, to tell you the truth, it's getting harder and harder to get new apple varieties to test like we used to at the university in the old days. Good old days. All right. Enjoy the rest of the tour. Uh, we'll talk to you later.